and welcome to Ask a Creative. So excited today because we have one of those unicorn, all-round talented people that I love to talk to. Welcome, Monique Mulligan. Hi, how are you today? I'm really, thank you so much for coming on. Are you ready to answer some questions from kids? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit nervous because they might ask me something like really weird. But I think I'm prepared. I can't guarantee there's not going to be like really weird questions, but you know what? I'm sure you can handle it. I reckon I can. So this is the book that I write down all of the questions in that the kids have sent me, and they have sent some really fun questions for you today. So Logan, Logan wants to know, do you have a favourite book character? Okay, I... I had to think about this question because I like lots of characters and books and so, you know, it's like, do you like um, the ones that I liked when I was a little girl or do I like the ones that I like now? But I always come back to the same one as Anne of Green Gables. So, oh my you too? My favourite! Yes, yes! Look, here's my book. It's my beautiful Anne of Green Gables book already and she's so adorable, isn't she? She's so smart and she's, yeah. you know, she was probably my first book best friend. Yes, mine too. She was my best friend. Mm. How could she be yours as well? Oh, she can be everyone's best okay. friend. Okay, all right. <laughs> but she was like, for, I, after I read that book, I wanted red hair so bad. Yes, yes. I, mean, I think I just wanted her to be my best friend and I wanted to talk with big words all the time like her. Yes, me too. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love doing this show because we find out we have so much in common. So, yeah, true. yeah so absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with that one. Now, um, who's this from? Tara asks, have you got a favourite place? Favourite place? I reckon I have a bit of a soft spot for Paris because I got to go there last year and that Did was you? amazing. Yes. Yes, my first time in Paris and it was just everything I dreamed of. What did you love about it so much? Um, I loved, I loved just seeing all the things that you see in books and you see on TV and, and you know, like the Eiffel Tower and stuff like that. Although that wasn't my favourite. I actually really loved going to all the art galleries because I love art galleries. Yes. So I reckon running through to find the Mona Lisa before the, the Louvre closed and getting there just in time, that was pretty exciting. Yes, my favourite was the Musée d'Orsay, I think it's oh, called. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, I loved that. I could have spent all day there. It was so yeah. fun. Did you get emotional? Because I cried looking at the Impressionist pictures. Yes, well, I was actually only 17 oh, when I went there. So it was a long, long time ago, but it's one of my dream places to go back to now that I'm yeah. old. <laughs> Yeah, 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 same. Well, I had to wait till I was old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so definitely. I totally agree. Yeah. I love Paris. Do you have a favourite place that you like to create? Like, do you have a, a spot that you create stuff in? Well, probably the room I'm sitting in right now is where I do most of my creating. So I have this little office and you can see behind me, you can see books on the shelf, lots of books that I'm keeping. I'm sitting on a comfy chair and you can't see this very well, but look who's with me. This is Beagle. Oh, hello. hello. Oh, my cuddly looking cat. She's beautiful. She's going to get annoyed now. You watch, she'll, yeah. she'll go and she's going to get up on the, there you go. She's going to sit on my stuff because she does that when she's annoyed because I moved her. But she comes and sits on my lap sometimes when it's, especially winter, she likes to sit on my lap and she gets really huffy if I don't let her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she is adorable. What a good riding partner you have. Yeah, she's wonderful. <laughs> um, Lucas asks, What's your favourite way to be creative? Um, I reckon, I, I like lots of creative things. So I love to write and that's probably my number one thing because I love to make books. And then I love to take photos and I really like taking photos of flowers and, you know, getting really close to things and seeing all the detail. And I love cooking and making 
fancy things for people to eat. I really love treating them with food. I don't know why. It's really fun for me. Um, and I also love to draw. Do you want to see a picture I drew? Yes, please. Okay, cool. So this is, I had this already. I love, this is something I find really relaxing to draw. And it's like a mandala. Can you see that? Okay. Wow. Yeah, so really, really detailed. How long did it take you to do that? Oh, a few hours. I haven't done one for ages, but it's, I find it really relaxing to just sit and just draw those. And also, this is like, that's the, that's Fergus the Farting Dragon, which I don't know if you can see him really well, but that's my kind of like idea for a story that I have that got turned into a book. So this is not the real Fergus, but it was my idea Fergus. So I kind of like drawing too. Wow, you are like the unicorn of creative people. <laughs> that's so cool. So Matt, that's a good um, lead into this question from Matt. So yeah. Matt wants to know, do you think in words or pictures? Ah, oh, that's hard. Um, I think I think in words more than pictures, but I think I do a bit of both. So I'm unlucky that way because I'm quite visual and I can really see things. The only time I can't is, I don't know if you've ever tried meditation, but you know when they tell you to see the rainbow or to walk through the forest or to see the little red dot? I never see it. I don't think I can, I don't think I can get my mind quiet enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that if I was, my brain didn't have so many things going on in it. Yeah. It's probably there, but it's hidden in front of it. Probably, probably is, yes. I think words are probably dominant for me. Okay, that's so interesting. And um, here's a question from Mika. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favourite book that got turned into a movie? Oh, oh I wish I'd thought about this one before because that's, that's a really good question. Um, Hmm. Well, I really liked Anne of Green Gables movie back when that came out years ago. Yes, me so, too. So, like, off the top of my head, I reckon that one because I just watched it over and over again. Um, Have you um, seen the new one on Netflix? Did you, yeah, are you brave I, enough? I can't, yeah, I've watched, like, two episodes and I just, no. <laughs> it's so different. Like, yeah. it's like you've just, like, if you stick with it, you get used to it but I think for those of us who there is only one Anne Shirley I think it's yeah. really hard but yes try it again stick with it it's a different sort of love yeah all right I'll take that <laughs> advice <laughs> any other ones oh, I can't think of any right now like so many but they're probably not so much kids ones yeah yeah, yeah true um okay here is one from Georgia mm -hmm. can you sing ah oh, so I reckon I can sing because when I was in year five and six, I was in a choir, a school choir. So obviously I had to be able to sing to get into the school choir, right? Yeah. But then I got to go and sing at the Sydney Opera House with thousands of other kids. And back then, this is such a long time ago, they had this place called the Sydney Entertainment Centre. And I got to go sing at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, like with thousands of other kids. And... No one could probably hear my voice, but I was still singing. So, yeah, I yes. can sing. But if you ask anyone else, like the people I work with, they'll say no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I think it's all about the details. So you don't necessarily have to say you sung in a choir. You can just say, oh, yes, I have sung at the Sydney Opera House. Oh, the entertainment center it just it's so true yeah so yeah, yeah it is definitely about it's like me saying like telling people that like i ran in a, in the 800 meters and i came third in the 800 meters but not telling them that there were only three people running own it yeah own it absolutely, absolutely. yeah <laughs> wow if there was three people in that race i would have come fifth right. <laughs> yeah okay i can't run at all so I think you did really awesome. I, I reckon I did as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here is a question from Oliver. Mm -hmm. Are you scared of anything? I'm scared of, I don't like sharks. I kind of get a bit kind of heebie-jeebie when I see sharks, pictures of them and stuff like that. And I don't like blood. 
very much at all. Mm -hmm. So you would never have been a doctor? No, no. And, you know, I was thinking I might be a nurse. And when I was about 14 or 15, I went to, and did some work experience. And that was enough to, to definitely convince me that I couldn't be a doctor or a nurse. No. <laughs> That's really interesting because Lachlan wants to know what did you want to be when you grow up? Yeah, so I wanted to be a couple of things. I found this book once and it had what I wanted to be. And I was probably about five when I wrote it. So when I was five, I wanted to be a nurse because I had a nurse's outfit, which was really cute. And the cat's back on my lap. Again. Yes, yes. She loves me. She's, and she's forgiven you for me. She has, yeah. Um, and I wanted to be a grandmother. I don't know why. And Jumbo. I wanted to be a storyteller. So... You yeah. wanted to be a storyteller since you were yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And you're doing it and you're rocking the yeah. That is so cool. I know. It took a really long time, but yeah, I'm finally doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I think that's amazing. Um, Luna wants to know what's the best part about what you do? I love to make make my words into or my ideas into stories and then I really love to share those stories and I think the really best part is when you when you read them or when you, you see people reading them and they're laughing and smiling mm -hmm. that makes it all worth it yeah yeah totally agree totally agree I'm so glad we've had this chat because I'm just finding out so many things that we have in common this is so cool yeah. <laughs> um Jack wants to know if you could change one thing about the world, what would it be? So it doesn't have to be like world peace. If you want to change just one thing, what, what would it be? I, I just really want people to be kinder to each other. So it's not on the scale of world peace. <laughs> I just think that if we, we were nicer to each other and more compassionate, then we, we all just get along that a little bit better because it's really, really easy for us to, um, to think we know why someone's behaving the way they are and they're not. And yeah, I don't know. I just want people to be kind. Yeah. I agree. Do something kind today. Yeah. And yeah. a great way to do that is to ask questions because just yeah. the conversation that we've had today, yeah. and we have found out that, you know, if we had gone to school together, we would have been best friends. I think so. I, I know, so. right? Yeah. So, <laughs> what advice can you give to kids like us when we were growing up who are creative kids and they're thinking that they might like to be an author when they grow up or a storyteller or an illustrator? What advice would you give to those kids? I would tell them something really important and it's not to listen to the self-doubt monster. So the self-doubt monster is, is this is my, this is what I reckon the self-doubt monster looks like. So that's my picture of the self-doubt monster. Wow. Yeah. So I sometimes run courses for kids and I talk to them about self-doubt because the thing with the self-doubt monster is whenever you believe in yourself or you think you've done a really good job with something, whether it's creative or anything at school, then the self-doubt monster comes along and tells you that you haven't. And it says, you know, you can't do that really. It wasn't really that good. And I reckon everyone I know has got a self-doubt monster who hangs around on their shoulder. Yeah, I do. So the trick with the self-doubt monster is to not listen to it because it hasn't got any power over you if you don't listen. And that's my biggest tip for people who want to be creative. That is amazing advice. That is so awesome. And we do, we all have that little monster. Yes, yeah, definitely. Stop us from being the best be the best us that we can be. So yeah, I'm saying, yeah. now I I would think that kids watching this are, you know, their brains are ticking over and there might be some other questions yeah. that they might like to ask you, or maybe they want to talk about that self-doubt monster. What's yeah. the best way that they can get in contact with you? Well, if you go to my website, which is moniquemulligan.com, then I have a contact page and you can send me emails through that contact page. And you can also find me on Facebook at Monique Mulligan Author. And you can send me messages through there and, you know, or your mum and dad can and, and ask a few questions about that. And I'm more than happy to answer. And I love seeing pictures of, of, of kids reading my books or, you know, if they want to send me those too, that's awesome. 
awesome that is so great thank you so much Monique I will put those details in the video description so if kids want to get in contact with you I'll make it really easy um, and they'll be able to get uh, get in contact with you and and I just wanted to thank you so much for sharing those answers with us today and being so inspirational to kids who you know who want to embrace that creative part of themselves and you know and, and I think the advice that you've given about the self-doubt monster is just so important to know that it's going to be there, but you can't let it stop you. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Yeah, I think it's just so important to me because I feel it, even as an adult, like it's not just for kids. So thank you so much for having me today and also for having you know, that with me for picking her up again. <laughs> um, she's your cute. <laughs> um, yeah. She's the star of the video. <laughs> she's definitely going to be the star of the video, but she's getting a really nice scratch at the moment, so she's pretty happy and purring and all of that. But um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate having the chat today. Well, thank you so much. And if you want to see some more interviews with creative people, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will join you on another episode of Ask a Creative. Bye.